Imagine yourself as a citizen of Nagasaki. And suddenly, you see a streak of white light coming from the sky. And then bam, what lands on you? The foolishness of an educated person. Robert J. Oppenheimer created a series of nuclear chain reactions, which later evolved into a tremendous weapon. But Oppenheimer did this only with knowledge and not with wisdom. And that's what I am going to talk about. Why wisdom education is the need of today's world. Let us understand the difference between knowledge and wisdom. I know I have a wiser audience sitting here, but let me do my job. Knowledge refers to information or understanding gained through learning or experience, while wisdom is the ability to apply that knowledge effectively, make sound judgments, and act wisely. Let us recall the days when our Rishi Muni wore saffron clothes with the long and white beard, surrounded by the little shishas, imparting wisdom. Yes, you are getting the right picture in your mind of an ancient Gurukul, where the Guru, teacher, who would also act as the father figure and his sishas, students, live a simple life and high thinking. Guruji's making their kids wise. And this is exactly what we need to inculcate in our education system. I want to bring up the idea of wisdom education as it is most needed in today's world. Uneducated people may be uneducated, but do you think brilliant people might act as uneducated? Let us take some examples. Like when I see educated people throwing garbage from cars and roads, it makes me think, what's the use of education if it cannot build ethics in them? Another example is when I see corruption among various committees who are once again very highly educated. Education should not only impart knowledge, but should also make you more broad-minded, ethical, understanding, and more sensible. I myself have experienced that during lockdown, while I attended Parchala, Parchala means where you learn basic principles and values in life, as simple as being honest, not stealing, not accumulating materialistic things, and finding the real meaning of happiness. Imagine a life of contentment just for yourself. And I believe this is only possible by becoming and taking wise decisions. I have learned all this from Parchala, and I believe this is wisdom. It does not mean that wisdom can be only gained from these institutions, but from many other sources as well. One such is when you take a good book and start reading. I started my interest of reading books when I was four years old. I was a little boy cuddling with my mother and father, pleading for some bedtime stories. They keep telling me until the storage runs out. Only when they completed the story was I able to sleep, having nothing else to do. I used to trouble all my family members in the same way by asking for more and more stories. When I started reading myself, I went to libraries to explore different genres of books, and that was my beginning of my journey to reading. I have learned the most important life skills from stories and books. For example, being open-minded, looking at things from different perspectives, and understanding the difference between reality and fantasy. I got life lessons from the moral stories which once my father told. The story of Godwale Guruji. Godwale Guruji is about an 80-year-old Guruji who is asked by a mother to help her 8-year-old son in eradicating the addiction of eating sugar all the time. The Guruji tells the mother and son to come back after a month. When the mother and son come back, the Guruji once again plans to come back after a month. This time, Guruji spoke to the child, and he got cured. The mother asks the Guruji, why didn't you speak to the child for the first time? The Guruji replies that first, he himself needed to eradicate the addiction of good. This story tells us to first imbibe the qualities in ourselves, and then teaching others. If I can recall another one, Papa told me the story of Vinova Bhave. Vinova Bhave would get scolded every day once his father would come back from work. Father would tell him all that he could have done better. 
One night, father went directly to his room. Vinova Bhave was perplexed. Then his father said, You are now 16. You are prepared to face the world with all that I have taught you. This changed my view towards life and its difficult experiences. This story tells us to the importance of being principled and striving to be better. And that takes me to my final story, which is my favorite one. Once upon a time, there lived a frog who had spent all his life in a well. One day, another frog from the ocean came to the well as a guest. The, the well frog started jumping around from one corner of the well to another, boasting of its vastness. For the ocean frog, the well was a joke compared to the ocean. The ocean frog eric the well frog and it forced its guest out of the well. This is a story by Swami Ramakrishna Paramahansa. We need to keep our guard that modern learning is making us the frog from the well. Few points that come to my mind which can be adopted by schools to able to impart wisdom education. Only if schools are willing to listen. Teachers need to be trained to combine practical wisdom with theoretical knowledge. Few of the ancient Indian traditions may also be emulated by modern schools. Such as, there could be life skills classes at least once a week in open nature. Students and teachers could have open conversations, debates and discussions on various topics. This would help the kids in gaining their wisdom through being open-minded. Students and teachers could have open conversations, debates and discussions on various topics such as empathy, building patience, making friends with all kinds of kids, taking leadership, how to react and respond on certain situations. Teachers and students could invite spiritual and motivational speakers to visit their schools frequently. Or students and teachers could make a frequent visit to such places to understand this more. This all would create a two-way learning and would cultivate practical wisdom in young students. We need to trace our ways back to the old times and practices. To name a few, Ayurveda, organic farming, yoga, meditation, and the list can go on and on. There was not even one sphere of life that was not covered during the Gurukul days. Observe, instill, assimilate, process, understanding, and one will learn instinctively. That was learning in its true form. And that is why Albert Einstein once famously said, we owe a lot to the Indians who taught us how to count, without which no worthwhile scientific discovery would have been made. To conclude my speech, I would also like to quote Dr. Sarvapalli Radha Krishnan, who once said, Civilization is not built with bricks, mortar, steel, and machinery, but with men and women, their clarity of mind, charity of heart, and spirit of cooperation. This is the future I would like to look up to in my world. Now, how does this world look to you? Thank you.